and each one and each son here again and today we're looking at this xbox and this old laptop running windows xp um and the reason we're doing that is because this and this xbox are mod candidates and basically what we're going to do is install xmbc i'm not going to show you the process of doing that because to be honest with you it's quite lengthy it's quite complex and i mean this is just an info video um basically to read, to basically mod an Xbox, uh, the hard drives, which I've essentially lost, you go me, um, they all have a uh, locked hard drive. They basically, the, pa the hard drives have a password, and if you don't feed it that password, it will not do anything. Um, the thing, it, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to apply, send it the password, it will then unlock itself, and you can use it like a standard drive. Now, uh, getting the ROM is the actual password for every Xbox, and it's, it's different for every Xbox, is stored on that chip there, or on these ones, it's stored on there. And um, that basically contains the password, the console serial, the region, the, um, uh, yeah, the region, and, you know, among loads of a different stuff. So that chip essentially tells the system exactly what it is. It tells it what serial it is, it tells even the Xbox Live serial number, so, you know, that's how they know what console to ban, because this sends the serial number from that chip to the console, sorry, to the uh, Xbox Live servers, and that's how it works. Obviously completely pointless now, because you can't get these on live anymore. Anyway, um, I digress. The point of the video is, reading the chip, you know, there's two ways to actually get the hard drives to work. One is to basically do a hot swap, um, which is to turn on the Xbox with the hard drive attached, unattach the hard drive once it gets to the menu, plug it into a PC and then mod it from there. That works about 80% of the time. Um, I've experienced problems with doing this. Uh, sometimes the hard drives can detect when you've changed it, such as uh, if you turn on the PC, it will first reset the drives, so that's not handy, so you have to get it all organized in there. And secondly, serial adapters, just you know, you know SATA adapters, just don't seem to work. The second, more reliable method is to read the actual EEPROM and then unlock the drive, because then, you know, PC restarts, you're not going to have to redo the Xbox thing. And it means you don't, you know, once you get the EEPROM off of this, you don't have to ever worry about the hard drive failing on you, because, you know, you can just go, okay, this hard drive's failed, just get a new hard drive, you know, burn it with uh, Xbox software, re you know, put the password on, you're done. The way you do this is um, these are serial EEPROMs. Now EEPROMs, you know, as you know, like on arcade PCBs, they store um, essential data, and these are what are these 128 byte um, serial EEPROMs. Now, what's the um, now basically the difference between serial and normal EEPROMs is like you'd expect. I've said this about the past in about Parallel Serial. I uh, think it was when I said about the uh, NES controller. Serial requires only like one or two or two or three wires usually, and parallel requires minimum of eight or nine, go, you know, and going up. So as you can see, I've got a wire coming here, which is two cores, and then I've got this wire. Basically, one of these wires is serial clock, and one of them is serial data. And um, basically, uh, the commands get sent through data, and the clock is, you know, just there to say when the data should be sent. Um, and uh, basically what you do is you hook this up to, you hook the serial data and serial clock into this board here, and there is a schematic online for that, and that's basically putting uh, two 4K resistors and two xenodiodes in a certain arrangement to make it compatible with a uh, PC serial EEPROM, serial, uh, you know, communications RS-232. And, and if you want to know how to build that board, if you go onto a site called um, llama.com, and it's got a, uh, it will be e reading an Xbox EEPROM uh, or HDD key. And essentially, after that, it goes straight into the RS-232 uh, port, and then we go onto this laptop. This laptop's running Ponyprog 2000, and this basically allows us to um, read serial EEPROMs. It can do parallel stuff, I think, but you know, for the point of this demonstration we're just using uh, you know I um, I squared C bus a bit re e one and don't have to really worry about too much about this you just have to go into the setup oh, I hate these little boards go into interface setup make sure it's set to the right um, might make sure it's set to the right port you're going to set up and then calibration I'm not going to do it 
Which of those two things you can read any eat from? One thing I was having trouble with, I could not read either eat proms. You know, this method I've done in the past successfully, like, I don't know, three times at least. And, um, well, I know it's not a lot, but I don't do many Xbox mods. Uh, but I've been having really weird issues. It would just not read it at all. And I've been thinking, is it the adapter? No, because I've had that adapter working. Now, like I said with um, Crisis Zone's gun, where the um, transistor wouldn't turn on, essentially, because it couldn't f tell when to turn on. This EEPROM couldn't tell when the data was high or low, because um, the actual ground from the PC wasn't connected, and I didn't think much of it, but no, I added this one grounding wire and it all worked, so uh, yeah, again, with the ground, if you're connecting two devices together, make sure it's got a ground, otherwise it will not know the difference. So yeah, I connected that to a screw pad and it you know, works fine. If I was to uh, turn the Xbox on, um, that's good. If it just if it turns on and off, on and off, on and off, then it's a bad connection. In fact, when it stays on, it's good. And don't ever touch around that area. On Pony Program, we just go to the little image there. Click Read. It'll say Read Successful. Um, read Size 128 Byte. And then we have our serial data. And I'm just going to go and click the Save. And I'm going to call it 1.6, and we're going to change it to bit, make sure it's set as bin. And that way, doink, there we go. Now, we've just read the entire chip, the entire contents of that chip, onto the PC, saved it on the memory stick, and now we can do whatever we want. But yeah, just a little guide as to how you read these EEPROMs, and um, secondly, what you should do with serial stuff again. Um, I'll say a quick thing about these 1.6 Xboxes. Um, these caps, these one farad caps, these are for the RTEC. If you don't have them, the board will not boot. I don't know why, it just doesn't. But um, yeah, on the older ones, you do want to remove them. The actual one farad is uh, there. So anyway, you can watch Luke Morse's video about that if you're curious. Anyway, um, yeah. I thought I'd give you a bit of an insight how to read ROMs and a bit of tips uh, so you don't screw up like me. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed and thank you for watching.